Yes, well, I am 33 years old. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Nicole Hinton, and I'm married to the wonderful <laughs> Tony Hinton. Um, together, we have five children. Um, I was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, my mom passed when I was about nine or ten years old. I was raised by my dad. Uh, I have one sibling, um, a sister, and a niece, and um, a nephew. That's just a little bit about my background. So, my name is Tony. As she mentioned, I'm married to Nicole Hinton. And I also uh, have five children, <laughs> um, as she has mentioned. Um, I was born and raised, you know, by my mother and my father um, in separate homes. My mother and father was not married. Um, I have one brother and a sister who is 21 years younger than me. <laughs> um, and I'm 33 as well. I'm much younger than Nicole. Uh, hey, pause. <laughs> How is he I'm talking still, still about? Younger. It doesn't matter. I'm still younger. I was born in February, and brother, T see, I need mean, brother Tony was born in June. So how? That's the Lord's doing. She's still older. Sorry. So that's you know pretty much my background, and that's us. I came to Christ um, growing up under my grandmother. You know, I used to see my grandmother. Neither one of my parents was saved when I was younger. So uh, I just remember, and my grandmother's name was Queen Esther uh, Metley. Her last name was Metley. Um, but her name was Queen Esther. And for the longest time, I never knew that uh, Queen Esther was in the Bible, you know. So, you know, growing up with her in the house, you know, we used to have church in the house. And she used to get me dressed up, you know, to have church in the living room when my Uncle Earl had church services at our house and you know so I kind of got to know God well got to know church at an early age you know I really didn't form a relationship with God until I got much older um, and during that time you know she taught me the importance of prayer and the importance of um, you know really having a relationship with God and one of the things that struck me was one time I was playing with my my uh, younger cousins and I was laying hands on them and you know, they shouting, falling out on the floor and acting a fool. And my grandmother came out the room and caught me. And she said, you know, she said, that's not something you play with. You know, you, you do that. You do it. You do it when it's real. You know, you don't play with God in that way. You know, of course, I was embarrassed because she did that in front of all my cousins and everything. So I kind of like, you know, grandma, you could at least wait, you know, a couple minutes or something until I, you know, came came back from the altar. Anything, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Grandma rebuked me right there in front of the whole church. I wasn't happy about that. <laughs> but needless to say, you know, I ain't lay hands on nobody else. <laughs> I ain't lay hands on nobody else until, until I became a minister. Um, and that was about 20 years later. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, so that was my my introduction to Christ and, and really kind of knowing the seriousness also I remember being in a prayer line um, at, at my church growing up and being called out, saying that I was different. And for me, you know, at the time, I was like, you know, is he calling me? And he said I was special. You know, and I'm sitting there like, like hey, what kind of special he talking about? You know, <laughs> where, where to go in on this man, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, but I knew there was something different. You know, there was definitely something different that God was doing with my life. Um, and when I... I, I, my grandmother passed when I was 17. Actually, when I was six months, they told us she only had a few months to live. When I was a baby, they told us she only had a few months to live. And she actually lived until I was 17. Mm. So, you know, you know, God is faithful, you know, because had it not been for her, I probably would not have known who God was, who Christ was, that foundation. You know, so I thank God for Queen Esther's life, you know, because she's the one that pushed me. Um, I never understood why she always used to not allow me to go and do things that... I, she clearly let other people, you know, other family cousins and stuff go and do. And she's like, Tony, no, you can't go there. You can't do that. And I'm like, I'm older than them. What are you talking about? I can't go. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes, you know, God has, you know, our lives marked. And even, you know, sometimes, especially we as young people, we sit there and we say, man, my mother, she's so irky. My grandmother, she's so irky. Or my father, you know, sometimes you got to listen to that, man. God will put people in your life as we always say guardian angels. Sometimes guardian angels can come through the natural, you know, and people will... Um, 
and our family and, and people, different people, prophets and so forth, uh, is put in our life for a reason, you know, and they do that to uh, speak a word for protection and so forth, you know, sin warning. Um, so when she died, I actually went, you know, to another church, started going to another church, and I actually, that's where I found my relationship with God. That's when I was actually filled with the Holy Ghost and mm -hmm. got the power that I needed to stand today. Mm. If I could put an insert on your testimony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you say your grandmother, Queen Esther, how God told her, I mean, I'm sorry, not God, the doctors told her that she only had a certain amount of, 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 of time to live, but she lived until you were 17 just so that you could get what you needed and get to Christ. That makes me want to pose, you know, a question, you know, to people watching, who is God keeping you alive for? Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's purpose. purpose. <laughs> yeah, it's purpose. It's definitely purpose. And that's why, you know, I, like the songwriter say, you know, um, what was it, One More Chance? You know, mm -hmm. that song, you know, you hear the, the anointed woman of God on there and she says, somebody was on the corner waiting for your yes. You know what I'm saying? That's why we can't be selfish about this thing and say, oh, I'll come to God when I feel like it. I'll come when I'm ready. I'll come. It's not even about you. It's not about me. You know, there are people that's dependent on your testimony. You're like, why did I get molested at a young age? You know, why? That's because you need to minister to, you know, the ones that actually went through this. You know what I'm saying? There are people who are taking their lives every day because they can't get through the hurt and the pain that you pressed over. So you got to be able to stand up and you have to come out from among them so you can say, look, I, I went through it. You know, I've been through it. God delivered me. And, you know, you have to be able to do that. But if you don't ever come out, how you how how is somebody going to hear what God is, is doing through your life? That's some good stuff. Oh, how did I come to Christ? Um, a lot of you have heard me already on my channel. You know, for, so for some of you that are seeing this video for the first time, um, how I came to Christ. Uh, my, I actually grew up in church. Um, I, I remember at one point in time, for, for a certain period of time, I lived with my mom when she was alive. And when she passed, I went to move and live with my dad. Now, uh, around the time my mom was living, she kept us in church. Um, I remember at one time being Catholic. <laughs> and I remember at another time being Baptist. So we were kind of, um, you know, but, but I was in church. Ne nevertheless, I was in church. And um, I remember being a part of all, you know, these things and being on the usher board and being on the choir and all that other stuff. But, you know, just like Tony was saying, you know, I didn't have that relationship. So when my mom passed and I moved with my dad, um, we weren't really going to any church. My father, you know, he would worship. He would talk about the Lord. Um always but we just never you know went to church or attended any church you know on Sundays that the thing was he would play gospel music all day he would go around the house singing you know worship and stuff like that but we just didn't go to a church and on my way to school one day in high school uh this girl was walking on the same side of the street as I was and she began to speak to me and uh well I spoke to her because I was like we're on the same side of the street the street might as well talk uh, long story short she told me you know that I needed a relationship with God she told me about her church she told me that I needed the Holy Ghost I was like I got the Holy Ghost I shout all the time you know you you can clap your hands right now I go in on you and she was letting me know you know the Holy Ghost wasn't something that you caught you know the Holy Ghost wasn't shouting the Holy Spirit you know is a person and that you know once you receive the Holy Ghost that you will have power and the ev the evidence of the Holy Ghost Holy Spirit was you know speaking in tongues and you know I was like okay so you're telling me I don't have no relationship with God I go to church and you're telling me you know when I shout I don't have the Holy Ghost <laughs> so basically you know <laughs> she was explaining all those things to me and you know, it was a total setup by God, and her mother was an evangelist at the time, and she lived right across the street from uh, my sister and I. We start going to church. Um, not too long uh, after that, I was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost um, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But, you know, even with that, there was, you know, still some struggles, still some... Um, 
things uh, that God needed to do in my life. But that was the first time that I realized that, you know, it wasn't about trying to be perfect. And, you know, I wasn't trying to get to know God because I was scared to go to hell. Now, you know, I knew that I needed a relationship with God. And when you love God, you know, just, you know, just, just, it's just like with a husband and a wife. You know, you love your spouse. If you really love your spouse, you're going to you're not going to do things to hurt them. You know, I'm not going to go out here and cheat on him and you know be leaving off the house and not coming back in and all this other stuff. My love for him, you know, causes me to be faithful. You know, but the thing is, you know, God's love it, it is totally on another level because as humans, we're limited. And my love for him cannot cause me to be faithful. But my love for God can cause me to be faithful to him. Because you have to have a love and a relationship for some someone. You know, something that's higher with a higher uh, level of authority and power than you have. It's no way that, you know. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Jesus. You know, I can't. I can't do anything outside of him on with my own strength is what I'm saying. You know, what keeps us day to day because there tem there's temptation, even though this thing right here is fine as all get out. You know, there's temptation out here. And what keeps me set and keeps me fixed, you know, on on my marriage, on, on my husband, on my purpose, on everything is, is my, my love and my trust and my relationship with God. But, um... That's going kind of off, but y'all probably needed that too, so that's good. So that's how I came to Christ the first time. <laughs> Second time, third time. <laughs> right, there were many times. I just wanted to come back and say, because some of you are going to ask, you know, what do you mean many times? I'm, we're talking about backslidden, you know, when you were backslidden in a backslidden state. Um, my husband said briefly how he went to the church and how he went to the altar and all of that stuff, you know, and for me, um, after being in a backslidden state, you know, when I just said how I met the girl and I was in church, my dad actually pulled me out of that church and said that I could no longer go there. So after I left there, he kind of didn't put us in another church. So I kind of started doing my own thing, started going to clubs, you know, started getting into, you know, wrongful relationships. And I was at a point in my life where I was just not even thinking of, about God, not in the church, not, you know, just doing my own thing. I really didn't care to be delivered. I remember saying at one point, you know, if I go to church, I, I'm going, you know, be giving up, you know, all this, all this stuff. I don't feel like it. I want to have fun right now. That was just my mentality. But, you know, God arrested me while I was in the bed with another guy. We were sitting there, laying in the bed together. He was my boyfriend at the time, not my husband. You know, <laughs> he was uh, my boyfriend at the time, another guy. And we were sitting in the bed looking at music videos and the Lord spoke to me audibly. I heard him. He said, you are not somebody's girlfriend. You are somebody's wife. And I look over like, does he hear this? Clearly he didn't hear the call. So I went to the bathroom and I was saying, you know, God, I know that that was you. Even though you're a backslider, you still know the voice of God. God filled me just in time. Even though my father took me out of the church, you know, it was that relationship. You know, I, I, I started during that time when the young lady had witnessed to me, you know, started seeking God and praying and all that other stuff. So by now I knew his voice and gifts come without repentance. So, you know, I basically told God if he wanted me out of this, that he had to, he had to get me out of it. And, you know, less than two weeks later, me and the young man were broken up and that started my journey, you know, back to Christ and that was in the year 2005 I truly gave my life back to God and sold out for God and um, I still had some struggles and all which you will read in the book uh, <laughs> a lot <laughs> of you gonna be like really really you too you too you too <laughs> <laughs> I was but, off the hook too I was yeah, but it's, you know, I ain't put all mine in it 
thing. I... Silence. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry. Um, wrote this book because Nicole told me to. Initially. <laughs> 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 yes, I mean, are, are you serious? <laughs> like initially, yes. That, so you're just gonna keep it real, real, <laughs> really real. Okay, so basically, it fell in my spirit ever since we got married. <laughs> he said, God said, write the book, write your testimony, write your testimony of how God saved you and how I brought you all together. Now I started writing this book, kind of like. Not too a little while after we got married, it's been seven years in the making almost. And I did. I told him. I said, God said we gotta write this book. He said, That's your thing. You write that book. I said, No. God <laughs> said we got to write the book together. You know. So seven. You know. This is it's almost about the time we've been married that we've been preparing for this book and writing this book. And you know now. It's available. That's that's basically the answer that God told us to. He told us to share our testimony in detail. We are very transparent. Um, and you know, one of the things is, um, you know, some people I'm sure probably are like, you know, well, what's the difference? Everybody else, other people got testimonies. This not other. I don't know. I'm sure everybody else do. Yes, but, and I have heard um, some people with similar testimonies. The difference I'll just say within this is it was God directed. You mm -hmm. know, what I'm saying it was a. He assured through me that it was as well something that we needed to do. So, you know, the reason we wrote it was because we were following God's uh, footsteps and 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 His leading on on to do it. Because we believe that it is going to bless uh, many people, and I believe it's going to bless people beyond ways that we won't even be able to fathom as the ones that wrote it. You know, God, this is a God thing. You know, and some of the feedback we've gotten back already has been um, humbling and mind blowing. You know, so. Get your copy. What will others get out of reading this book? Um, I believe they will get a lot. Um, for one, <laughs> a lot of my business that I didn't want to put out there, but the Lord uh, directed us to do so. So <laughs> you'll get to know a That's lot the about. Truth. Um, uh, I was like, "This is about me." me. ASDF. <laughs> that um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, but but the good thing about it is, you know. We have over, we are overcome by, you know, our testimonies yes, and yes, and. Can I paraphrase? Okay. <laughs> I ain't say you so, ain't know the scripture. You know the scripture. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to keep it short. And sweet. Yay. No, so but um, no, you know, so. What was the question? <laughs> oh, wow, why we wrote this book? Yeah, so you know. <laughs> You know, it's, I believe it's going to be a blessing because we put a lot of our stuff out there, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, when you think about the church, when you think about, you know, people in church, what do we think about? Hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Are they there? Yes. Do we sit beside them? Yes. Are they still there? Yes. They're going to be there. They're not leaving. You know, but the thing is, you know, we say, you know, and I have a lot of unsaved felt relatives who like, you know, with a church, they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites. Yes, they are. But are you going to go to hell because... Everybody in church is hypocrites, or most of the people in church are hypocrites. You know what I'm saying? So in this book, we're being transparent to let you know these were our struggles. These are our struggles. You know what I'm saying? These are the things that we experience while being in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? While coming after coming to him. With power. The stuff. With power. Being Holy Ghost filled. Mm -hmm. The stuff we encounter. The stuff we put mm -hmm. ourselves into. You know what I'm saying? We so that already, you know, it's, it's it's not the thing that of you know. Oh my gosh, you know, I'm I'm so this, I'm so that, I'm so that. You know, but it's something when you get delivered from it, and you can tell somebody else that you got the power to come out of it as well. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, the it's one thing that I mentioned in the book, and I'm not going to say it on here, but um, that I was delivered from. You know, I was delivered from it because. Of obedience, I'll say it this way. Mm. This is why it's important to wait on God for a spouse. Because this thing that I had struggled with, it was an addiction for years. I struggled with it. And when I met this woman of God, you know, there it, it, it's more to marriage than just, you know, sexual fulfillment or, you know, oh, she look good or he look good. You know, it's more to it than just that. It's, 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 there is a divine connection that is associated with it. Parts of your deliverance is a show. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, the day since I met this girl, 
this woman, that thing that I spoke about in the book, I have never been entangled with it since then. You know what I'm saying? And this, you're talking about eight years ago. You know, and I have been delivered and set free. Well, you, you wanna, know. Well, you want to explain it because in the book they probably no. Not. Okay. Get the book. <laughs> You'll see it yourself. <laughs> so, I ain't even want to put it in the book. Right. But, you know, but I, you know, so you know, get the book. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and truth be told, it, it was so many more different struggles too. But, um, but as as men, as women, you know, we struggle when we come to Christ. Don't settle in it and think it's okay. You know, no, you shouldn't be singing on the praise team if you know and you're still hopping from bed to bed. You shouldn't just be doing that. You know what I'm saying? If it's a struggle, be true to yourself. You're like, Lord, I'm really struggling with this. Help right. me. You know, Don't really help practice. me. Some struggles I had, I didn't even want to pray about. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I don't, I'm like, I don't even want God to know about this. Really, sir? <laughs> <laughs> the Lord knows. He knows about it already. Just tell him about it. You know, so... Um, so I believe it's going to bless others in, in a way that I can't even fathom. You know what I'm saying? I believe it's going to bless others in a way Nicole, she can't fathom either. You know, so the book isn't even about, you know, us getting, um, you know, money or reviews and all that. It's about somebody being delivered somewhere. Yes. Somebody being delivered somewhere. I know what it's like to be in bondage. Yes. I know what it's like trying to get out. Of, it's like being wrapped up in a, a certain... I watch the Animal Channel a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when mm -hmm. snakes, that's how they kill their prey. They wrap themselves around them and they squeeze them to death. And that's how bondage is. It the devil try to wrap himself around us through fornication, through, you know, drug addiction, through alcoholism, through, you know, all these different things. And he try to squeeze the spiritual life out of us. You know, and that's what he wants. He want he wants your spiritual life. People are like, Well, I'm still living, I'm still breathing. He don't care about you still living or breathing. He don't want you to go to the next life mm. with Christ. You know, when you die and leave here, our soul still lives on. So, that's the life he's attacking. So, don't be fooled because you're still living that, you know, oh, the enemy not after me. He's after, he's after your spiritual life. And, and if you even think that he's not after you, he already got you. You know, so, it's going to be a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Nicole puts all her stuff out there. Like, for real? Like, shorty? Like, I ain't even know this about you for real. You know, so. No, you didn't. <laughs> get the book. I'm telling you, I was in there reading like this. Shoot, I was reading his part like scandal. No. Nah, part nah, one, two, and nah. three. It's like okay. Nah. <laughs> but no, nah, no. Nah. I mean, it's it's you know I believe it's gonna be a blessing, like for real. You know what I'm saying? Primarily because you know it was our business, like for real. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody gonna be blessed. Amen. Any questions? <laughs> I can't hear him. You can't hear me? <laughs> Wait, Wait, I hear one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Answer it. Uh, she, said, she said, well, what do you do if you're with somebody and you're not supposed to be and you know it? Well, you answer that since, since you answered your own question. Cut them off. You know, <laughs> some stuff is so practical. Right <laughs> we ain't going away. Oh, we ain't done yet. Carry some of our brothers, you know, because um, Nicole, she she's biased. She always encouraged the women. No, I'm joking. I'll be busy. I just don't be having the time. You know I mean? encourage. You know, she everyone. does. She encourages everybody. But, you know, I just want to talk to the brothers. Sometimes it is hard. Mm -hmm. It's difficult, especially when you come from a background of, of whoredom and sleeping around. <laughs> um, you know, it can be hard to kind of keep yourself. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to really um, pull it in, you know, knock it off and just just. <laughs> You know, push, push towards God. Amen. Let Him be your first love. Amen. You know, that's the that's the key right there. You know, it's not about how you fall; it's about how you get back up. Amen. We're going to fall. It happens. You know what I'm saying? But it's how you get back up. And not only that, you know, you have to get to a point where you're not falling, getting up. You're not a babe falling, getting up, falling, getting up, falling, getting up. You are always going to struggle with something, but that something don't always have to be sin. You know, it can be, oh, I'm struggling. I, I'll put myself out there. I'm struggling with fasting, and I normally fast twice a week, but these last month, I've been like, you know, you know, I've been doing like once a week, 
you know, half day, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. So that's a struggle for me at this point, you know what I'm saying, among some other things that I'm not going to mention because the God didn't tell me I had to, like he did with the book. <laughs> so I'm just not even going to say nothing else. But I just want to encourage, you know, the men to just really, you know, continue to push toward God, you know. And in this season, when you start to see women come out of the woodwork, it's not because you're so fly. It's because the enemy is trying to keep you from getting to God. You know, so don't think, oh, man, my player, my playerhood, my, my, I'm about to, man, this is crazy. It's not that you're crazy. It's the same. The devil, like, oh, no, he trying to go to God. You know what I'm saying? So let me send everything he like his way so he won't go. We got to watch the tricks of the enemy. You know, um, even in waiting on a spouse, you know, he'll send the right one. He'll send the one that you like. He'll send the one that's you're attracted to. Oh, well, she go to to the, to the gym or she, you know, she like she like Jill mm. Scott, like I like, you know, mm. she like, um, you know, she like Lil Wayne and she like this or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? If God ain't tell you is it, it's not it, you know, and if you get the book, learn from your brother. When God say it ain't it, move on. <laughs> I'm telling you, it'll save you some heartache in the long run. Move on. Um, so, you know, I encourage and I admonish you all. You know, me, we as men, we, we, we have this thing where, um, you know, we, we're visual. You know, the summertime is probably one of the hardest times, especially if you don't have your um, your flesh under, under subjection. You know what I'm saying? So, when we, summertime can be the hardest time for us as brothers because, you know, women, they go from, you know, the snowsuit to just shoes on, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, <laughs> you know, you got to really guard your eyes, guard your mind, guard your ear gates, everything, you know, even to listening to music. People say, oh, there's nothing wrong with listening to secular music. I like Lil Wayne. I like Jay-Z. It's okay liking it. But you have to know what it is that caused you to drift away from God. Is it certain music that you'll listen to? If Put it this way. If the Lord was down here with you, and don't be smart or cynical. Because some mm -hmm. people would be like, oh, if God was here, I'll still listen to it. And you'll be zapped dead. What? <laughs> you know, but, you know, but, but be truthful. You know what I'm saying? If, if the Lord was to actually walk in and you truly reverence him, would you listen to things that, would would be offensive you know what i'm saying would you do that stuff no we wouldn't you know and we just have to be truthful you know what i'm saying some people say i'm cutthroat to the point i try to be because i don't like talking too much you know what i'm saying but um you know men we gotta you know stand up we be truthful you know what i'm saying um pray you know talk to god you know what i'm saying sometimes i believe and I'm, this is what i'm hearing in my spirit right now people be like man i just feel like i just i'm just sitting there talking to myself like what am i talking to trust and believe god hear everything you have prayed out of your mouth down your heart you know what i'm saying he hears everything that you you have prayed to him you know and you've even seen it the mere fact that some of you still are living you know through the neighborhoods you grew up in through you know family situations through the abuse you took there is a god you know what i'm saying you there's no way some of you made it through some of the stuff you made it through and still here today. And you didn't make it on your own power. You know, so I just encourage the men to just stand up, you know, um, to really, you know, just proclaim Christ. You know what I'm saying? That's our number one. You know, and that was one of the mistakes I made even in the book. You know, I went running after a woman, a female, instead of God, thinking I was running to God, but I really wasn't. I was actually going after a girl. You know what I'm saying? But get the book. I pray it bless you. You know what I'm saying? And, and I pray that that somebody be delivered, you know, that, that somebody be healed, that somebody be set free. Because some people, they we what we do as humans, we sit back and we'll say, all right, you know, um, well, that person, they're doing, they doing so well. You know, a few years ago, the Lord led me to put my wife in our testimony. I'm a very private person. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so private, like, I don't want nobody knowing anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about the private, like, I'm, I'm beating my wife and I don't want nobody to know. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about private like, you know, if, if it's my business, it's my business. You know what I'm saying? So, a few years ago, I, the Lord, we were struggling. You know, we was we had eviction notice after eviction notice. And this was times when we were doing YouTube videos. We was on here and encouraging people, praying for people. And, you know, and the Lord was like, no, you're on the forefront. you y'all out there, you I know. know. And people are looking at you all like, man, I know they got money. I know they prosperous. I know. And, and the thing is, we were struggling. You know, I had just lost my job. We was on food stamps, which was kind of good. Um, 
Yeah, we was on food stamps. <laughs> we, we was uh, we was um, you know, at eviction notice. Our water was turned off. I'm trying to get the water turned back on. Uh, before the kids got home from school, I'm trying to get you know the BJ and the electric turned back on before the kids got home, so they wouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And you know, we as men, that can be crushing. That can be hard. You know, but at the same time, what we gotta remember is that God is our God, while our family is dependent on us. While our family is dependent on us, our children dependent on us, our woman is dependent on us, we lay in the lap of God. Mm. You know, Jeez. we lay in the arms of the Lord. When the Lord, when we get to the point where it's like, God, I can't take enough. Like, I can't take no more. I, can, I absolutely cannot take anymore if another thing happened. And then that's when he say, you come and you hide under the shadow of the Almighty. <sighs> Let me cover you. Let me protect oh, you. You know what I'm saying? And then when you put your trust in God... Let me tell you, that year when we was going through all that, we was about to be evicted. And two weeks prior to us being evicted, I told my wife, because the time where we were living, we were living in a very nice neighborhood, you know, a very nice house. And I said, we need this amount of money to stay here. It was like $20,000. I said, that's the only way we can stay here and not lose nothing. And let me tell you, we got $20,000. You know, when you trust God, oh, when you, you trust Jesus. God, he will come through for you, you know, and that's the difference when, you know, it's, it, you know, women, you are, you all are powerful, you know, and that's the importance of the woman not taking the power from the man in the house, oh, because Jesus. truth be told, we have the power to make the, the sky rumble when it needs to be, you know, Jesus. God will open up the heavens when the man is in place oh, to Jesus. do what he has to do. And Ooh. when the man, brothers, when we get in place and we lay before God and we pray when the family oh, sleep, mm. you just don't Jesus. know. God is like, yes, you're in position. I'm going to bless your house. Mm. When you stand up and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Pray with your family. Pull them in. In the day and age we're going into, you got to, especially as black men. Police is taking us out. I used to be an ex-cop. I know the crooked stuff they used to do. Police out here doing stuff they, you know, have absolutely no business to be doing. It's time to get back to prayer. It's not time for us to backslide. It's not time for us to, you know, go. And this is for all races. You know, it's not time for us to run because there is a bigger enemy than a police. We have the devil. We There are demons that's real. My grandma used to tell me, and there are people that got gifts that can see them. You know, and then and people say, oh, this is all phony. You know, you see on, on, on different videos on YouTube and people, you know, you got prophets ministering and pre preachers ministering. Sometimes they, some people are phony. Who knows? But one thing I will tell you, even when my grandmother was living and she had the gift to know when somebody was going to die. And she will say somebody is going to die within the next day within our family. And to see that and to hear her speak that and to for it to happen. You know, more than once, is like, oh my God, God is real. He's real. Jesus. You know, so we have to. There's a bigger enemy. You know, the bigger enemy is, is Satan. Yes. He's the one. He's the one that's behind the police. He's the one trying to take all the brothers out. You know what I'm saying? We are strong men, you know, and, and we need to survive. We need to stand up. We need to be the men that he has called us to be and, and be blessed, you know, and be blessed. There's an inheritance for us. You know, it's not meant for us to struggle. It's not meant for us to work four and five jobs. I work three, you know, but, well, one of, one of them I like doing. <laughs> but, you know, so, you know, case in point, we we just need to, to stand up, take our rightful places, you know. And some of you, you're asking God, God, what, what, what's going on? You know, where, 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 where am I right now? You know, I want to do right. I'm not perfect. You know, I still do this. I still do that. You know, I might still smoke here. I might, you know, but I still go to church. Lord, you know my heart. You know I love you. Mm. God's saying your heart is not just good enough. Mm. You know, you can't go year after year, keep saying the same thing. You know, that's why people always say, you know, you always say God, because I always say people say, you know, you'll have the preacher say, well, God is waiting on you. You're not waiting on God, you know. And what they mean by that is you already know the instruction. Mm. It's just time for you to adhere to it. Mm. You know, you know what God said. You know, you 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 can't struggle with something and, and just be like, okay, it is what it is. I'm in it. I'm just what I'm gonna do. It is what it is. You know, that's a lifestyle of sin. Mm. 
So, you know, you got to be careful with that. You know, God do know your heart, but there's consequences with it. You know, I spoke about David one time before, you know, David did a lot of stuff, you know, but he had a heart after God's own heart. But the thing is, he had consequences behind that. Something that David was supposed to have done and would have been able to do, his son Solomon had to do, rebuild the temple. Why? Because David committed murder. You know, he had Uriah's blood on his hand for cheating with took the man's wife. You know? So, I pray this, this, this has blessed you. Um, brothers, if you have any questions for me, uh, I'm not on here often, you know, so might be a blizzard where you be at <laughs> you know but um but i pray that god you know continue to touch you strengthen you um and bless you as you continue to press towards him father god we thank you right now we give you praise honor, and glory god for every person that is viewing this video lord god we pray for the individuals who are just at a state of confusion at a state of not knowing where to go what to do at this point but, Lord God, you are the God that knows everything, God. You are our King. You're our Lord. You're our Shepherd. You have blessed us, oh God, to wake up even on, this, on today. So I pray right now that you will give clarity of thought to those individuals. I pray that you will touch them like never before. I pray that you will give them insight, God. Some of them are confused, Lord God. You're not a God of confusion. They're confused about relationships. They're confused on whether or not to take this job, to take that job. They're confused on why they're still struggling after it's been so long, why they're still struggling after they paid their tithes, after they paid their offering. Lord God, but they're... But I pray that you will remind them that there is a due season with their name on it, God. I pray that you will remind them, oh God, that you are still God. That, that, you know, some are questioning why you allow the death of a relative to come, Lord God, that was close to them, God. But I pray that you will give them insight, God. Give them clarity in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Lord God, that let them know that their struggle is not in vain, God. That let them know, God, that you have not forgotten them, God. I even hear, Lord God, that there is an atheist out there now who used to believe in you, Father. But now they have stepped away, Lord God, not knowing and believing in the universe, God. Remind them that you are the creator of the universe, God. And that you are the one that pick them up and put them down, God. Lord God, that you are the one, oh God, who set the foundation of the world, God. You are the one who knew our name before our parents knew our name, God. So we bless you even now, God, that there is a greater future that you have for your people, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So we bless you. We love you. We know that you are the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus, your son, Jesus Christ, oh God. So I pray for clarity, God, that it be sent to your people, God. I pray, God, Lord God, that any depression that's been trying to overtake them, I pray against it in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of suicide right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I come to remind somebody that troubles do not last always. And Lord God, we bless you. We love you. We praise you. And Lord God, I speak to the men. I pray for the men, God. Lord God, the ones who feel like they're lacking. And the ones that don't feel like they have been they have been a good father because they can't provide the way that they want. Mm, the ones, Jesus. Lord God, that feel like that they're just being harassed by a, a, a baby mother, oh God, or another parent, or, or whomever, God, an ex-wife, whatever the case may be, God. I pray for relief for that individual, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray, God, that you will open the eyes of those, Lord God, who have yet to see the spiritual supernatural take place in their life, God. I pray, God, that when they pray a prayer, God, on tonight after seeing this video, God, that you will show yourself to be true. And we thank you, we love you, we praise you. In the mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the name of our book is Those Who Wait on God. It is now available. If you look in previous videos, I said that it will be out uh, um on August the 31st, which is tomorrow, but it has been released now. It actually has been available since yesterday. Um, it is available on Amazon, and for those of you who have Kindle, it is available on Kindle as well as Create Space. But um, go ahead to Amazon. When you go to Amazon in the search engine, just type in those who wait on God, just the way that we have it written below in the description box, and it should pop up. The book is only $12.99, and again, it's just our testimony of 
our life, how God saved us individually, the many mistakes that we made, and how he supernaturally put us together. It's not just, oh, we met and, you know, we started talking. No, this is, it is mind-blowing <clears throat> even to us now. So, um, down in the description box, I will have all the links to Amazon. It is available to you internationally, wherever you are, even outside of the United States, again, internationally. So, you can go on there and purchase it. Please remember to give a, a review on Amazon. And I'll also leave all of our contact information where you can reach us on Facebook, on Facebook, um, our page is Those Who Wait on God as well. I'll have a direct link at the bottom. You can follow Tony on Twitter at Tony Hinton. You can follow me <coughs> on Twitter and it's um, at I Am Because of You, but it's a one, the number one instead of an I. And um, on our Instagram, Those Who Wait on God, which uh, I will put under the description box as well. I'm also on Periscope. Tony and I will be doing some things on Periscope live so we can interact with you all and answer questions as well so follow me on periscope and that's at i am because of you again with the one instead of an i it's one a m b c u z o f u and again i'll put everything under the description box so please get your book you're going to want to get it for a friend um uh, like we were saying, if, if you have children or nieces or nephews that you've sent off to college and you really want them to keep their minds focused on God while they're going, um, if you're courting, if you're single, if you're dating, even if you're married, you know, if you need your faith increased, we've already went through it. I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed. So again, it's now available on Amazon and Kindle and the direct, the direct links are below. I'll also leave our email address, which is tnhintonspeaks at yahoo.com so that you can access questions or even send in your testimonies. When you read this, let us know how it has blessed you, if it has changed your life, it ha if it has you know given you insight, if you've received deliverance. You know, if you was a backslider, you're going to be blessed. If you're in the Lord, we need to grow your relationship with God. You're going to be blessed. If you struggle with certain things, if you're afraid to come back to God, if, you know, if God told you to let go of somebody and you struggled with it, you struggled with if you were supposed to do it, you know, and you need that comfort and that peace, I believe that's going to be, you know, clarity. So, we truly believe you all are blessed. And, um, well, we know you're blessed. <laughs> if you're alive, you're blessed. Blessings are not immaterial things. You know, but anyway, you all be blessed and you enjoy the rest oh, also, of Oh, also, okay. you can um, use the TN Hinton Speaks at Yahoo. Uh huh. Yahoo.com. Um, if you want to request for Nicole to speak at your youth event, um, you know, she'll come speak, she'll preach, prophesy, or anything that she needs to do. Um, but we have been called to um, minister at different youth functions or regular functions um, to speak. Uh, so if you, if you would like a different face in your city, you know, we will definitely do the Lord's work and come and speak to you, um, whomever. Um, that's it. <laughs> Amen. Be blessed.